Hello, I'm Daniel Baker and I'm the Director of Global Process Safety Testing for DECRA Process Safety. I'm here at our UK laboratory operations in Southampton and in this video I'll be giving you a quick whistle-stop tour of our state-of-the-art facilities. During the tour you'll get to see some of the tests we're able to conduct presented by our highly skilled and knowledgeable team. In the UK we have GLP, ISO 9001 and 18001 accredited laboratories, each specialising in different areas to comprehensively support our customers. Our main laboratories are our Industrial Explosion Hazards Laboratory, which specialises in dust flammability and explosivity testing, as well as thermal properties of materials. Complementing that, we also have our Electrostatics Laboratory, whereby we're able to con accurately control the humidity and temperature of the laboratory environment to look at electrostatic properties of samples. We have our Chemical Reaction Evaluation Laboratory, where we undertake a wide variety of different calorimetry tests, specifically looking at chemical reaction and material reactivity for the safe scale up and operation of a chemical process. And finally, we have our regulatory laboratory, which undertakes physical properties and physical hazard testing for endpoints such as reach, CLP, transportation, and safety data information. So without further ado, We'll start the tour and I'll pass you over to some of the team. Hello, my name is Aidan Bushell uh, and I run the Industrial Explosion Hazards Laboratory. Um, in this lab we deal with mainly dust and powders um, and what we do is a lot of small scale flammability, ignition sensitivity and explosivity testing. So we're going to show you some of the tests that we do. Before we begin testing, we first have to analyse the particle size distribution of the material. We do this via laser refraction, measuring initially samples in the as-received state to assess whether milling or sieving is required, then again in a ground state if necessary. Another parameter we assess before we begin testing is the moisture content of the material. We can do so either using one of our balances that measures moisture by the way of weight loss, or the Carl Fisher titration method to measure specific water content. This is a combustibility dust determination test, previously known as a group AB classification. This test is performed to see whether a sample is capable of forming a flammable atmosphere when dispersed in air. If found to be positive, further sensitivity testing would be advanced. This is a demonstration of 0.3 grams of aluminium powder. Our minimum ignition temperature tests allow us to assess sensitivity to ignition against hot surfaces, while it's in the form of a dust cloud. It is one of two tests performed where we can determine a safe operating temperature if you are looking to get suitably rated electrical equipment for zone areas. This is a demonstration of an ignition on a minimum Temperature ignition. Our layer ignition temperature test is the second test used in determining what rating electrical equipment should have within zoned areas. In this test, we assess the thermal stability of the material in the form of a layer. The lowest value of the two tests after applying a factor of safety is the final safe operating temperature. Here is a demonstration of a sample which ignites on a lower ignition temperature test. Our minimum ignition energy tests allow us to assess how sensitive to ignition materials are against electrostatic discharges, whilst in the form of a dust cloud. We can also replicate mechanical sparks by adding an inductor which prolongs the duration of the spark. For our explosion severity test, we can determine the maximum pressure output and rate of pressure rise within our 20 litre sphere. From the rate of pressure rise, we can calculate the KST value of the material, which gives you your ST class. These are 1, which is low, 2, which is medium, and 3, which is high explosion potential. 
Within this equipment, we can also determine the LEL value of a dust using our minimum explosion concentration test. We can also manipulate the presence of oxygen and assess for the lowest concentration where ignition can occur. This is done using our limiting oxygen concentration test and is useful if you are looking to blanket the atmosphere using an inert gas as a basis of safety. Hi, my name's Simon Shepherdson. Uh, I'm the team leader of the electrostatics laboratory here at DECRA and shortly we'll take you through our environmentally controlled lab and show you some of the tests that we conducted. Welcome back. Uh, one of the first tests that we'll be looking at is the powder volume resistivity. This is a test that looks to determine how conductive, how insulating or anywhere in between a powdered material can be. Uh, this is used in line with the BS7506 test standard. Here we have our charge relaxation determination equipment where we can look at powders or solids uh, in a way to evaluate charge dissipation to earth via conduction. Here we have a selection of surface resistivity and volume resistivity test cells. Uh, depending on the application, we can cover standards from specific to clothing, laminar materials, uh, liners and plastics, uh, and for other general functions. Hello, my name is Paul Carter. I'm a safety testing specialist here at DECRA Process Safety UK. Welcome to the Chemical Process Evaluation CPE Laboratory. Here we study chemical reaction processes in order to help clients provide a safe plant operation. The core chemical reaction hazard tests are designed to simulate reactions under normal controlled plant conditions, but also thermal stability assessment and simulation of runaway events occurring during worst case scenarios. It is a combination of data from these tests an interpretation that delivers a DECRA report with results and recommendations for safe plant conditions. Data provided within these reports can also be used for plant design, such as vent sizing and vessel cooling capacity requirements. Safe handling and storage temperatures of raw materials, intermediates and products can also be studied. These videos will show you some of the staff working in the lab and the test instruments that we use. Thank you. Hello, my name is Carolina and I'm the team leader of the CP lab. I would like to talk to you about VSP. VSP stands for Vent Sizing Package and is a adiabatic test used to study worst case scenarios. The VSP results are scalable to plant conditions. The test gives direct measurement of time, temperature and pressure that can be used for vent sizing calculations on runaway reactions and decompositions. Reaction is performed in a conjugal cell that is placed inside heating assembly and in a containment vessel. We can measure data up to 350 degrees or 100 bars. Hello, my name is Elizabeth and I'm a lab technician in the CPU lab. I'm going to talk about the carriers test. The carriers is used as a screening test to identify exothermic activity, gas generation and vapor pressure effects. The testing is carried out on reagents reaction intermediates or final products to provide guidance on onset temperatures and magnitudes of exotherms or endothermic activity. The sample is charged to a glass tube and then ramped from ambient to 400 degrees using a linear ramp of half a degree a minute. We also do variants on this testing such as isothermal holds for the study of gas evolution over long durations. Hello, I am Adelia. I am a lab technician in CPE lab. I would like to introduce you the accelerating rate calorimeter. This system is an effective screening tool used to determine the thermal stability of a substance under adiabatic conditions. The test is conducted in a small spherical cell containing between 3 and 5 grams of sample. The temperature profile allow us to determine the onset temperature of an exothermic reaction or decomposition, kinetics and magnitude of the runaway. Time to maximum rate can often be analyzed for calculating a TD24 value. Results are generally not directly scalable to plant reactors, but give a good overview of the behavior of a material 
of elevated temperatures. Hello, my name is Dr. Charles Baker. I'm a laboratory scientist in the CPE lab. I would like to talk to you about the adiabatic Dewar calorimeter. This test is used to simulate worst case scenarios and the results are scalable to plant conditions. The test gives direct measurement of time, temperature and pressure that can be used for vent sizing calculations on runaway reactions and decompositions. A reaction is performed in a one litre stainless steel vacuum flask sited in an oven system. We can measure temperature up to 350 degrees C or pressure up to 25 bar. Hello, my name is Michael and I'm a laboratory technician in the CPE lab. I'm going to talk to you about the cone tube test. The cone tube test allows us to determine the sensitivity of material to heating under confinement via a well-defined set of standard parameters. The data obtained is then used for either formal classification for transportation purposes or for an evaluation of the hazard posed by handling material. By using a range of orifice plates, the degree of confinement of the sample is altered in order to obtain a quantitative result in the form of a limiting diameter. Below. I'm going to talk to you about the differential scanning calorimeter, also known as a DSC. The DSC system can be used to provide thermal stability information on starting material, final product or reaction mixture using the temperature ramp screening test technique. This test allows us to determine the onset temperature of any exothermic events and the total energy associated with those events. This information can help determine whether a sample needs further testing, for example, explosive properties or self-reactive tests, and for thermal stability assessment, we generally use a sealed high pressure cell. Hello, my name is Flora Mihala, and I'm lab tech I'm junior lab technician in CP and RT lab. This is the friction test. It, the purpose of the test is to determine whether a substance uh, presents a danger of uh, explosion when submitted to the effect of the friction. It can be used from transport classification or ensuring safe plants handling. The method yields quantitative results in the form of limited loads. Maximum force of uh, 360 newton can be applied. The positive results are uh, explosion, flames or flash. And uh, if this limiting uh, energy is if this limiting energy is sufficiently low, it is classed as too dangerous to transport in the form in which it's tested. The full hammer is part of the explosives testing series and can be used for transport classification or for ensuring safe plant handling. The sample is charged between two metal pins and the impact device, which is this, is dropped onto the sample. Observations range from no reaction through to an explosion, which can be a loud ignition or sparking. If the limiting energy is sufficiently low, it is classed as too dangerous to transport in the form in which it was tested. Hi, I'm Gordon Amory. I'm the process safety specialist in the CBE lab. This is our methylen RC1 reaction calorimeter, which is used to measure the total heat evolved, accumulation, and the rate of heat evolution through chemical reactions. It allows us to calculate the temperature rise that can occur if control were to be lost while performing the reaction. This temperature rise could lead to boiling of the reaction mixture, or in the worst case, thermal decomposition of one or more of the components. Gas volume and rates can also be measured. Virtually any chemical reaction can be simulated, and the results can be used for ensuring cooling capacity on plants is adequate. Combining this data with thermal stability testing helps provide confidence to plant safety. Hello, my name is Shaz Yunus and I am the team leader for the Regulatory Laboratory. In this laboratory, we investigate the physical hazards and physical properties of test items to meet various regulatory requirements. Chief amongst these are the UN Transport of Dangerous Goods Regulations, as well as EC Regulations 440 for REACH, 1272 on classification, labelling and packaging of substances and mixtures, and 528 for the Biocidal Products Regulation. Our analysts will now demonstrate some of our testing capabilities. Hi, I'm Trevor and I work here in the Regulatory Testing Laboratory. Uh, one of the tests that we are asked to carry out quite frequently is flashpoint testing. Uh, this particular example here, uh, the flashpoint is being determined using the Penske-Martin apparatus. 
we actually have uh, two other pieces of equipment capable of doing Flashpoint. This is the ABLE testing apparatus, and we have the small-scale closed-cup apparatus. This enables us to carry out Flashpoint testing in the range of minus 30 up to 350 degrees C. Hi. A couple of the tests that we perform here in the regulatory testing laboratory are water solubility and partition coefficient. In both cases, we prepare samples uh, either at a slightly elevated temperature and then they're analysed against the calibration curve using either our HPLC equipment or UV spectrums. Hi, I'm Aaron and this is the flammability of solids test. The purpose of this test is to determine if when a solid sample is ignited, it propagates either by burning with a flame or by smouldering. The test may be performed to either EU regulations as an A10 or to UN regulations as an N1. In both cases, a fire train is constructed using a standardised mould and placed on a heat-proof mat. The train is lit at one end and is loaded where the propagation occurs. If this is the case, the rate of propagation is recorded. I'll now demonstrate. We are able to perform the aerosol ignition distance, the foam flammability and the enclosed space ignition testing to meet the requirements of the aerosols directive, UN transport of dangerous goods regulations, EC regulation 1272 for CLP and the globally harmonised system. Here is the apparatus set up for the ignition distance test. The purpose of this test is to determine the distance at which a spray aerosol will still ignite and sustain a flame. Hello, I'm Aguila, lab technician in laboratory testing lab. And here we have oxidizing liquids test vessel. Oxidizing liquids test is used to determine the potential of the liquid sample to increase the burning rate of the combustible substance when the two are thoroughly mixed and heated under confinement or to form a mixture which spontaneously ignites and the goal is to compare the pressure rise times with known oxidizers and assign the versification by EC A21 or UN O2 test methods. Hello, I am George Jordan, one of the senior analytical chemists, the regulatory testing laboratory. Behind me is a vapor pressure testing equipment. At aircraft process safety, we have two methods. One is a static method, which is suitable for testing materials and mixtures, and it covers a wider range. We also have the isotonoscope method, which has a narrow range and is suitable for more pure substances. Hi. I'm Craig Ayling, and I work in the regulatory lab as an analytical chemist. Oxidizers pose a significant risk in the chemical industry. Therefore, it is critical that they are correctly identified for safe use, storage, and transportation. Primarily in the regulatory lab, we test under the EC regulations for REACH and the UN transportation regulations. The principle of the test is as follows. The test sample is mixed with a combustible material in this case cellulose, and ignited. The resulting combustion is measured for severity. This is derived from the rate of combustion, either measured across a train, as in the flammability of solids testing, or throughout a cone of material. The fundamental differences between the two test methods are that in the EC test method, you get a positive or negative result, i.e oxidizing or non-oxidizing, whereas for the UN test method, the materials are further subcategorized into packing grooms to allow for safe but cost-effective transportation.
I will now give you a demonstration of the UN transportation effort. I hope you enjoyed the tour and it has given you a better understanding of what we do and why we do it. As mentioned earlier, this was just a brief snapshot of some of our testing capabilities and I'll leave you now with a full comprehensive list and also welcome you to reach out to us if we can be of any further assistance. Thanks for watching.